Hi guys, I'm Shmi and I'm taking you on my road to the 675 LT. My journey as I await delivery of McLaren's new supercar later this year. Something I'm obviously exceptionally excited about and I'm going to be documenting the full story as we get there. So hopefully by now you've already seen my first drive in the car. A fantastic experience, a phenomenal machine. Well today we're going to head into the pit garage and take a look around behind the scenes in a little bit more detail about some of the preparation and some of the options. So let's head into the pit garage. Here we have one of the 675 LT prototype vehicles and one of the things I think that's really cool is the way McLaren do their camouflage and the wrap on this car if you look at it you can see the outlines of the number 41 F1 GTR long tail which is indeed that car sat right there next to it but I think that's quite fun different from normal camouflage and exciting when you look at it and they've also done Formula One circuits and other different things like that as well but obviously camouflage because when this car was undergoing testing they didn't want it spotted so you can't really take in the vents and shapes to quite the same degree as you could obviously if it was unwrapped and a bare car in a finished color same goes around the rear though uh, pretty hard to hide what they've done here Had a good effort at it but this car i think it's actually flown back to be with us here today um, as well take a peek at the inside you can see all the cables equipment computers wiring everywhere all done of course for the testing and just rigorously running over everything in all sorts of different environments and getting it ready putting on the mileage making sure they know everything about the car and can get the setup completely right before building the customer cars Given we're here today to take a look at the 675 long tail, it only makes sense to look at the backstory of that car. And it all began with this, the 1997 McLaren F1 GTR long tail. So in 1995, as you almost certainly know, McLaren attended the Le Mans 24 hours and were victorious with the F1 GTR. First place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, and 13th place. A truly remarkable and unprecedented victory for a manufacturer entering its first Le Mans 24 hours. But the response to that was that the rivals came back with significantly more competitive cars in the following years. So when McLaren re entered in 1997, they had to create something new, and that new car was this the F1 GTR Longtail. 641 millimeters longer than the original F1 GTR, that's 25 inches or so, and 135 kilos lighter, just 915 kilos, which in a car this large is fairly spectacular. It was also, though, about the track ethos, focus, taking out the weight, making it quicker, making it more streamlined, aerodynamic, and able to compete with the competition. And we've got two of those cars here, a factory-owned car, and we've also got a customer car a little bit further up just to remind us where all of this began and what the purpose and what the sort of representation of the long tail name is. And although this car wasn't as competitive in the 97 Le Mans race, it did win five of the races in the FIA GT Championship in that year. So really showing that McLaren knew what they were getting at and doing with this. And there are only a handful of these in the world. I think it was three factory cars, or three road cars maybe, one of which is the one we'll come and have a look at right now and these are worth an awful lot of money tens of millions of dollars pounds or euros or whatever currency you'd like to look at this one has a pretty special number plate on it as well f1 gtr so it's pretty rare to get to see one of these outside of the goodwood motor show but um we've got the two of them here we're able to take a quick look up and even at the interior obviously the f1 i don't need to say it the central seating position that made this car so famous in the road cars and also in the race cars. A very, very special place indeed. So there's a mini history lesson. That is where it all began. That's why we're here with the new long tail, a new model designed based on the 650S, of course, but using that same ethos of making it track competitive driver focused, more enhanced performance and lightweight. This LT is finished in the silica white hero combination. So the silica white paint combined with red highlights. So you have the red brake calipers, the two-tone wheel design with the 675 LT logo, which is a nice little touch, I think. And on the interior, you also have red stitching and the red finishing to the seats. Let me just see if it's unlocked. Take a look at that. So you get the red embossed leather around the sides of the seats there. An interesting thing is the change in materials for the bodywork on this car. So everything from the B-pillar backwards is carbon fiber. 
So this piece is carbon fibre, the large rear quarter. Obviously the vents and lower side vent are also carbon fibre. This piece is carbon fibre. The side skirt is all carbon fibre. The wing is carbon fibre. And everything you see around the rear is also carbon fibre. The central bumper piece fairly obviously, but also these side panels as well. As you come around to the front, similar story for the front bumper, all the lower sections, the central piece in the middle, the lower splitter and these side parts too, also carbon fibre. And while we're here looking at the headlight, new headlight design with the 675LT logo printed in there as well. Again though, the headlights mimicking the McLaren Speedmark tick that you see on the logo. Another feature you can have with red or with the stealth pack, which makes it a carbon finish look. Here's an extraordinary little bit of geeky knowledge. That 675 LT logo down there on the side skirt sits just two millimeters tall off the carbon fiber, whereas it was a four millimeter tall logo on the 650S. So even that tiny little saving just to shave, perhaps even fractions of a gram with the two logos on either side of the car is made there. We'll take a quick look comparing the 675LT to the 650S the Spider, my car that sat alongside it here. We have Mantis green on the 650S Spider and Napier green on the 675LT. At the front, obviously, the shape remains much the same. It is based on the same model car. This is the limited edition, special track focused version. But you can see immediately the front bumper is more raked, it's more aggressive. The splitter sticks out further. The front is lowered two centimeters, so it's slightly more raked in towards the ground. You can see those carbon fiber end plates as well sitting at the side. Alongside, you've got the lower side skirts with the new lower vent, but around the rear is where everything starts to change. It's named long tail for that track focus, but it does have a three and a half centimeter longer rear. Most of which, as you can see, comes from this sort of connected diffuser piece, the carbon fiber one large rear bumper area, extra vents at the side, a new sort of opened up design here. The titanium exhaust, of course, sticking out in the center slightly differently to the 650S. So from the rear, there's a lot more that's been reworked than around the front, which I think works quite nicely with what the car was going for. And it's all the aerodynamics with this new wing, which you can see is this much, much larger component across the top, whereas on the 650S, it's just this smaller piece. So although the wing is carbon fiber on this car, most of the rear of the car is carbon fiber it's painted which works to me very nicely along with the sort of large black areas you have through the center whereas the 650s that carbon breaks it out in a slightly different way saving 100 kilos of weight from the 675 lt has been no easy task and that's meant mclaren had to take a look over the entire car at all of the components to see where it could be saved from and we've got a few of the main parts here and one of my favorites that we'll start looking at right now is the exhaust system. This is a newly designed titanium exhaust, 5.2 kilos. If I lift this up, you'll see it weighs, well, not very much. You can imagine what 5.2 kilos looks like. Significantly lighter than the standard system. But what's also pretty trick with it is this crossover design. So to optimize the sound, given that you don't have very long from the back of the engine to the exit from the exhaust system out of the car, they've used this crossover pipe from left to right and right to left that's given the right length of tubing through the titanium exhaust to get the noise that, as you've heard, sounds truly brilliant, really brings that V8 to life underneath. And let's face it, it looks pretty snazzy too for an exhaust system. Next to that, we've got the engine cover. This is a polycarbonate cover for the 675LT. Weighs just 3.68 kilos, which is 1.7 kilos lighter than the cover on the 650S and the 12C. In addition, it has a slightly new design with these slats, saving weight by cutting them out, but also increasing the airflow into the engine bay. And a slightly new design at the rear end of it too, just for airflow as well. This is again one of my other favorite parts, the air brake which is 50% larger than the air brake on the 650S, yet it only weighs 2.3 kilos. Um, as you can see, I'm not exactly struggling to lift that up, and it's such a cool design as well, the full width at the rear of the car. We've got some of the smaller parts here. Take a look at the titanium wheel bolts. 39 grams a wheel bolt. That's just 780 grams for the entire car. Every little thing is saving weight. Internal parts here, we've got a compressor wheel, machine just for the purpose. The lightweight Conrod, 474 grams. 
come look at some of the more complicated bits. The lightweight wishbones and uprights. Again, maximizing or optimizing the design for minimal weight wherever possible, but still retaining the strength that's required with the sort of performance a car like this is capable of. And here we have the roll hoop, which is an optional part with the Club Sport pack. It's a 4.4 kilo, it sort of installs behind the seats, of course. It is a titanium piece, it has to be specced from new, of course. It takes out the rear parcel shelf, but really sort of shows what this car is about, the uh, racing experience and dynamics and extra strength security you get with that. So that's a whistle, whistle stop tour over some of the parts that we've got here. You can see that a lot of thought has had to go into all of this to rework the 675 LT and fully optimize everything. I really love this exhaust system. It's so cool to look at and it sounds fantastic. We're able to take a quick look here at McLaren's track telemetry. Now in the car you have the three cameras set up. You also have the USB port for downloading the track data too, so that you can copy it over to the computer and load it up into the software where you can see an awful lot of information. You've got the three cameras with overlays, the front bumper camera, rear bumper camera, and the internal camera. You can overlay onto that the speedometer and rev counter with the gear selector, and also a percentage throttle meter and brake. Also overlays lap times. You've got the speed, accelerator, brake information, track overlays. You can see the GPS coordinates placed exactly on top of the track and a whole load of other information. It's just running through on a demo system here. But there's a lot of data that comes off that. Fascinating to look at and see. And certainly something I want to show again another time. But comparing laps as well here. See the earlier or later brake points. All sorts of information. Let's whiz over to the car and I'll show you those cameras. On the front bumper, the camera is placed just in the center on the carbon fiber front bumper piece. There's a plinth for the number plate that gets installed just beneath that, so the number plate doesn't need to obscure the view from the camera. So we take a look at the camera on the inside. You can see it's mounted in the headliner. There's this piece just fitted right here to look forwards between the driver and passenger's shoulders and around the rear. The camera is mounted right center stage alongside the reversing camera. So one is for reversing and one is for the McLaren track telemetry pack. So you have the two cameras there. If we take a look back on the inside, the plug is here for the McLaren track telemetry. So there's an additional USB port on the rear of the center console box where you can download the data to a USB stick. While we have these two cars in the pit lane, let's take a look around at some of the optional extras and upgrades you can have on the 675 LT. And we'll start with the option packs, which include the carbon fiber exterior upgrade pack. That's the end plates on the front splitter, the lower side vents, and the center part of the rear bumper for around £8,000 in exposed carbon fiber. There's a club sport pack for the interior. That gives you the roll hoop in brushed titanium, the four point harnesses, and a fire extinguisher as well for around £5,000. And there's the Club Sport Professional Pack, also known as the Chris Goodwin Pack, for 22,000 that gives you the complete car setup, how Mr. Chris Goodwin would have it himself, the chief test driver for McLaren. When you get to the exterior, you've got a number of paint options, special paint, elite paint, and even MSO heritage and defined paint. So you can completely customize the exterior appearance of the car via McLaren Special Operations. And of course, all of the carbon fiber parts, you can individually specify as well. So the door mirrors, the carbon fiber sill finisher. I'll come around and show you that. That's this piece here, or not on this car. Let me see if this other car, the Delta Red car here, has it. Yes, so the carbon fiber finisher piece you have on the side sill there. You can also have carbon fiber on the wheel arch piece just there in front. You can specify the front bumper end plates, the rear bumper, the lower side intake, and even, of course, the upper side intake, the larger intake versus 650S in carbon fiber. There's a soft close door option, which as you shut the door, if you don't entirely close it, will electronically pull it in for a tidier finish. And you can also get stealth badges. So the standard badge here, black with the red McLaren speed mark, you can have it with a carbon fiber finished back as well, which I believe this car has. So I can show you that immediately alongside there with the carbon fiber. This car has an MSO carbon fiber roof panel, one of a number of defined MSO options there's a whole vast array and obviously anything that the cars don't have, one can specify.
On the interior, you can have an electrically adjustable steering column, so when you open the door, the steering wheel will rise. makes it easier to get in and out with the bucket seats. You can have a number of seat options, so the leather full electric heated seats um, with sort of easy entry movement, or you can have these standard carbon fibre bucket seats, different finishes, so you've got the Alcantara and leather combination. You can have full leather, you can have an extended leather option kit, or the extended carbon fibre interior kit, which gives you the door cards and these rear parts here, these rear panels. And then you can uh, choose whether you can adjust the passenger seat. That's an option, adds a tiny bit of weight. And even change the seat belts to orange. For the wheels, this is the standard five-spoke wheel design with the silver finish. You can have the 10-spoke design that the green car has here choose from a variety of finishes. So that's the stealth finish, this is the standard finish, or you can have it with the diamond cut sort of two-tone effect finish. The car comes with a new Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tyre developed for this car, or you can opt to have the standard P0s or P0 Corsa tyres as well. From a technology point of view, we've got a new 10-speaker Meridian system, up from the seven speakers before. And as well as that, you can also get the three track telemetry cameras that I'll show you a little bit more as well, which tie into the McLaren track telemetry software, which is included standard in the Iris system. We've got front and rear parking sensors and rear view camera, volumetric alarm, the vehicle tracking system, the four-wheel lift system, just as per the 650S and 12C that raises all four wheels to avoid speed bumps, dual zone climate control, because of course the car comes default without air conditioning at all to save 11 and a half kilos of weight, but that can be added back in as a no-cost option. And then just the standard stuff, the branded floor mats, the ashtray, the car cover, and a warning triangle, and that is the full defined option list, and above that, you are off to MSO to add anything you would like. While we're surrounded by a sea of McLarens here, I'm going to jump into this orange LT and play with some of the entertainment system. So, of course, getting into the bucket seats, slightly more tricky than the standard electric heated seats, but no dramas there. Immediate difference, by the way, on the dial, you have the screen saying 675 LT rather than the 650S, of course, let's pull the seat forwards, which is easily done with a lever just under the front. And there's also a pouch here, which is where you can keep keys and stuff, so there's a fabric pouch on the front. But let's start this up from the inside. Foot on the brake, one tap on the button. Slightly more aggressive than in the 650S. And now I've got some air conditioning blowing on me, which is nice because the sun has come out here. And it's warming up a little bit. So if I lower the steering wheel, which I'm going to have to work out how to do in this car. Release lever just in the centre, pull that down, lower the wheel, put it back towards me just so we can see the dials. I'm going to have a play through the systems and see if I can find out really what's different. Um, so of course, the big thing I touched on is that the air conditioning controls that used to be here with a display and two jog dials, one for temperature and one for air conditioning um, power, how much air is blowing, have now moved to here. And that's done by a press of this. So rather than having the two control panels, the weight is saved by building that into this central control panel. So air conditioning on, off, auto, on or off, windscreen, um, hot air to the window, so you have independent zones for left and right, temperature controls, you can set mono so that they stick together and then control them from the right, 20, so you've got a couple of other settings for uh, where the air is blowing, um, choosing between the three different height zones up above, centre or down towards your feet, uh, recirculation and then fan speed down at the bottom as well, so it's all done by the, uh, the iris touch interface, that all works pretty self-explanatory and then when you press the um, fan setting again, it goes in or out, or alternatively, you could press the home button, which again, just like before, this is like a satellite view of the McLaren Technology Center, the home in Woking with the building and the pond just around it, and will return us back to home as well. So while we're here, we'll have a quick run through, although this hasn't really changed at all from the 650S system, which is also available as an upgrade to the 12C, 
You have the phone control, contacts, history, keypad, favourites, all done through Bluetooth. You have the media settings, so you have radio, digital radio. And down here you have the aux and USB ports, plug in your iPod or whatever else you need and you can store that in this little armrest pouch. Um, you have a direct into radio settings. Um, which is a nice sort of display to look at, but let's pop that on mute. And you can have favourites saved and um, scroll through the different radio stations there. Nav, brilliant nav system. A lot of settings you can configure on the 675, well, on the McLarens. Um, all sorts of speed, live speeds, cameras, this, that and the other, and it works exceptionally well. I've been very, very happy using this myself in my car. And if you press the settings button at any point, you bring up what you need, so setting destination or your route or other settings. Um, there's a lot to play with in the nav mode though. And then you've got apps. So in the apps you have browser because the iris system can connect through Wi-Fi to your phone's um, data network if you are sharing a Wi-Fi network. So that works pretty neatly. Throw it up, you've got a web address. Uh, it's obviously not connected at the minute but that works very nicely. Then maps, um, similar idea, Google Maps loads up. Again, um, not going to work on us without the uh, uh, connection. Uh, rear camera, bring us straight to the backup cam. Out rear, there we go. Um, you can see the guy standing behind me, probably wondering what I'm doing. Tune in is digital radio over data, and then weather as well. But we'll jump just quickly to look at the McLaren track telemetry. We've touched on it already, but here we go. So, intended for track use only. Yes, we're at the track. So you have a series of settings, start a track day, view my laps, manage tracks, manage drivers. So that's quite neat, I didn't know you could do that. Um, so you can see the other drivers who have been here today out in this car, already all set up, that's quite fun. Uh, managing tracks, I think we're set up, yep, for Silverstone. You can save those, view laps. Let's view the last person who drove here. Okay, so that's uh, down a road and back up again, so not desperate <laughs> amounts of information to show. Um, saved on this car, or you can start the track day. And uh, well, I'm probably going to cause trouble starting this when I'm not even moving. But this is quite a nice interface, um, and it shows you the delta, so as you're going around the track, a quick glance, and it's not very far out of driver's line of sight to be able to see your current sort of information and the like. So this all works very, very nicely there in the track telemetry. Um, what else can I show you while we're in here? Um, it's all mu more or less what we know. Lock and unlock, uh, pop the bonnet, bonnet from inside, obviously you start in neutral, D for drive, R for reverse, you've got the hazard flashes, electric park brake, and this is actually something that's different about LT. So in LT, when you come to a stop, it won't then creep forward. So if we're in drive and we come to a standstill, it will automatically hold you, whereas the 12C and 650S pulled away and a drive away function. Um, so that's a difference. Obviously here, active enables in the same way as before. Um, hit that and then you've got your two twin settings immediately set up, the handling and suspension stuff, which doesn't change the traction settings as much now as it used to. That is set by that button. Um, which I believe has a series of different modes to it. And then the powertrain and gearbox is done on the right-hand side. But while we're here... Very nice, very nice. A lot more aggressive, more sort of... Whoosh, hard to explain, sort of turbo kind of noise going on. And in this, this car, actually, we've also got the Club Sport pack, so you can see the titanium roll hoop behind me here as we look through towards the engine bay. The new look engine as well back there. So, let's head over to these dials. Got a rev limiter, just over eight and a half thousand. To control the left dial and go through settings, you push away on that lower setting. And you've got home, settings, vehicle info, language, trip, lift system, which on this is an absolute requirement. Go into the vehicle info. You can see lots of the things you'd want to see. Um, remember, oh, we are in a basically a race car so it's set up with all the sort of hot information you could want to have on the display at any time. And the lift system raises both the front and the rear full suspension setup because this car sits a couple of, a couple of centimeters lower at the front so it's very very low 
that gets the whole car up into the air to get over speed bumps and the like because that's the focus on being able to drive it and use it all the time and uh, as well as that we've got a new 10 speaker hi-fi system that didn't happen before the 10 speaker meridian system which adds extra tweeters here in the door panels and an additional tweeter into this center console which previously was just a, uh, a flat piece but now has a little bit more height to it and that will bring the um, the audio level if you think from the sound system a little bit higher a little bit more towards um, ear height which for the audio files out there works slightly nicer inside up here lights um, usual sort of controls standard rear view mirror stuff always love the look of the door mirrors carbon fiber mirror caps on this car you can have the arms in carbon fiber too that's all optional and then you've got cruise control wiper stalk a hot a, a shortcut to get to lift system if you just press and hold this and hold it up it brings you straight into the lift system up or down or push away to remove that screen and then uh, left of course lights and indicators behind these shift paddles full Alcantara wheel and a pretty cool place to be on the inside of the LT the seats are really comfortable actually having now been sit here sat here for a while um, this is another one of the hero specs with the orange colored car with the gray um, around the sides of the seat trim I like having the carbon fiber down here on the tunnel anyway all right let's shut this off enough looking around let's hop out the experiment of getting out of the car holding the video camera with the carbon tub and the bucket seats which is probably slightly difficult no, no problem at all we've still got the same dihedral doors of course that open up and out from this carbon fiber tub which is the same as before just uh, 70 something kilos for the carbon fiber chassis and immensely stiff car as well We've got a plaque here, 675 LT limited to 500 cars. There isn't a numbered plaque, so to speak, on the car, but each car, customer car on the VIN number will end with 675 and then the three digits that represent the number of that car. So enough taking a look around the interior. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to follow all of my adventures as we head towards the new car, the ordering, the specification, visiting MSO, the build process, unfortunately selling my old car, the McLaren 650S, and then everything as we go through to delivery. I think it's set to be a pretty exciting journey. I'm certainly very excited and I can't wait to share it all with you. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. I can make an announcement that I've been keeping under wraps now for a very long time. Before 